right, I'm ready to go. All right, yeah, we're rolling. Cool. All right. So, <laughs> don't laugh at my clap. It's how you start porn-related things, okay? <laughs> with the clap. With and the hopefully clap. hopefully you don't end with the clap. Well, because <laughs> you don't have, oh God. <laughs> Come on, that was a good one. It was. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it wasn't. It had proper timing and everything. <laughs> All you horn dogs, this is High and Horny, the show where we get porn stars super high and ask them a bunch of questions. I am Kira Noir, and back there is our producer Tyler. Hey, See? Tyler. I remembered this time. Thanks. Thank you, Kira. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> mm -hmm. And today we have with us Jason Brown. Hello. Uh, he has been in porn for like 15 years. It'll be 15 in April. Yeah, 15 in April. Yeah. Um, he is one of my friends. I have only ever fucked you off camera, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no one has ever seen us fuck, which is a very it. special thing. Maybe I kind of don't Patreon want to. Either. See, this Honestly, is... Honestly, like, it's... Like, this is the thing. It's like, we don't automatically have, like, a say in who we get to fuck all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of one of those things where, like, I hope to work with you if, you know, Lord willing, but mm -hmm. who the fuck knows? I mean, <laughs> I've been in for 15 years. There's, just, like, my... I guess the only porn star that's on my bucket list that I wanted to work with before I got in is Nina Hartley, and we still haven't worked together, and she knows me, and yeah. we've taken pictures, we talked about it, but she, it's she, never She shoots her own stuff all the time. Do you do content trade? Mm. Yeah, but it's weird for me because, like, I'm just, like I said, I started back when, like, the internet was, like, a baby to porn and stuff. I started in 2004, so um, I'm still kind of getting used to producing my own stuff and like trying to you know schedule everything out and stuff and I also want to get enough content together to where like I can spend like a good two months not shooting anything and then yeah. have stuff kind of coming out and see how it no, works. It's never been easier now with OnlyFans and premium Snapchats right. and many vids and clips for well, sale. Okay, the thing about Snapchat is I'm completely fucking lost because I'm just like seriously like I gotta sit here and take like 15 minute videos continuously over and over again while I'm having sex. Okay, this is fucked off. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't like Dude, doing I that. I hate Snapchat. I really, okay, so I don't have a premium Snapchat because of that. Um, it's, it's good. See, this, the trade-off is if you're willing to do that, um, like every couple of seconds and like, like the annoying way, it, like knowing what you have to upload porn to right. Snapchat, it can make you a lot of money. Like I have talked to a lot of girls who are making a lot of money from that and... But I'm a guy! Well, you can do it too. All I the know, brain but... makes a bunch of money from Pornhub. Okay, I, my whole deal is like this. I do not like taking photos and videos of myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm weird like that. Um, I, I... I'm getting over it, but I have, like, a weird body complex and shit like that, so, like... I have an idea. What? Can I... Can I just, like, follow you around for, like, a day a week? <laughs> One day a week, I'll just be your assistant, and I'll just be like, look at what Jason's doing today. What you doing today, Jason? <laughs> oh my God. And then, like, we could, like... We could, they could make a thing. We could, like, we could make a couple of things where I'll be faceless, and it'll just be my hands and my voice. <laughs> um, like, and, like, weird-ass POV yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, We'll just spend the day together, and, like, it'll start in the morning of, like, what you eating for breakfast, and, like, we'll go and, like, do this. You don't smoke, room. do you? No, I'm not I smoke. forgot. Like, sometimes <laughs> I forget. I know she doesn't, but sometimes I forget. No, she, she does smoke. Oh, but just, just not here. I know. Yeah, I, when, whenever I smoke, um, I pretty much lose the ability to brain good. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, she I, will get that's contact. probably, like, the best thing I've heard all day. <laughs> I don't know how to break it because it sounds like some shit that Bender would say off a of Finch Your <laughs> Wait, so I, I want to try to stay sober as the host and just guide No, I totally get that. You want to be able to control the yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I, we might have one day where I'll have a guest host and then I'll get high. Woo um, but I need to have a guest host who's really good at talking, really good at getting other people to talk. That's me. I, yeah. Well, I can do that for mm -hmm. you. Yeah? Yes. Because mm -hmm. um, I, we... I'm talking to someone who's who's substituting weed for cigarettes at this stage in his life. Because mm -hmm. I used to, I smoked, on and off I smoked for probably, I want to say, 16, almost maybe 17 years. Mm -hmm. I feel like, how old are you, sweetie? Oh, call me sweetie. I call, <laughs> no, I, that's not, but you're going to have to let me talk the way I talk, because that's, I'm not going to change that. But how are you? 24. Okay, you're 24. Make me feel like, like a baby. <laughs> You're 12 years younger than me. I'm not that much How old are you, adults? little pumpkin? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Like. My bad. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but no, like, I feel like anybody who was born prior to, like, 1995, mm -hmm. um, you Guilty. still... One you year. St you still have kind of, like, 
the old school mentality on smoking. Hmm. Like, even in the latter parts of the, the 80s and in, in the beginning part of the 90s, it was smoking was kind of thought of as of a luxury. Mm-hmm. Like, or <clears throat> more along the lines of... Uh, you would see it and be more visible. Like, you fucking had the Winston Cup series for um, uh, NASCAR. You know what I'm saying? And they were, like, a big sponsor. And then when they did all of the, um, you know, advertising bands for tobacco and stuff like that, they had to give up their sponsorship of the uh, Winston Cup series and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't want it to be as fucking visible. So you wouldn't see it on TV shows. You didn't see it in movies as much. I mean, movies had a little bit more leeway with it. But, like, if you had to go through the FCC and shit like that smoking and shit like that was like big no-no for a really long time hmm. and so like they were trying to get people to process it out of their self mentally that's why you like like people don't understand the stuff you watch on tv even though you think it's just a comedy or it's like some just fun shit to watch it's programming you to believe or see things from a certain certain perspective and shit like that and it's doing it over time it's not doing it in the instance that you're watching it. it's just giving you little mental and visual cues on how you want to react. If something makes you happy or something, it, it, it makes you kind of more interested in shit like that, you're going to kind of lean towards that way because you're the more you see it. So, like, when people hear the word programming, they don't really get... We're all fucking organic computers. That's what we are. Yeah. No, if you want to get down yeah. to the fucking basis of it, I think we've talked about this before, mm-hmm. but that's all we are. We, we, we take in information and we process it and then we come out with our own little, you know, you know, little uh, program or whatever, like that we run ourselves. It's our like, own yeah, it's like pa- Pavlovian conditioning, you know. Mm-hmm. You Kinda, bell, you know what I'm saying? But it, it. just like with a, a computer, um, it's you, like we're you tell it, you it's tell it, if, if this happens, then you react this way. Our brain's the same way. That's how you can do optical illusions or like trick the brain to thinking that it's seeing something it's not because it's just trying to like, okay, whenever this happens, I'm supposed to understand it as this. Right. Um. So whenever you see like a certain, like, I'm trying to think of a way. To, you are so articulate with this, and I can't figure out how to explain it well. Well, um, but, it's, it's just basically like, okay, just, let's go straight down to the organic computer part. Yes. The organic part is just like, okay, we're, we are we have an end date and we have a beginning date. So it's not like we're infinite. So we're just like basic trees and, and animals and everything. We have, a, we have that organic, out of nowhere type of being. But we're computers in the ways that our brains are just of that as a freaking hard drive or a CPU on a fucking computer. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, you take in so yeah. much fucking information. The only thing that is your basic operating system is where you're from, what country you were born in, what your family structure is, and what your opportunities are. All of that is basically your operating system. You're going to operate off of whatever those are your main factors in how everything in your life is set off. Do you ever study psychology? No. Oh, dude, you'd... Fu- you'd I, the only it. thing I... I it's do, all about no. all this shit. But mm-hmm. the, what I do... I have read um, Freud's... Um, yeah. The Interpretation see, of Dreams. I don't, yeah. like, I don't like Freud. That, I, don't, I don't like it's, that psychology See, it's so hard, much. it's hard. Like, don't get me wrong. It's really, really hard to sit there and, and read everything because it's, it's done in Old English and it's done in a process of where everything is overly explained. Well, see, yeah. I, that's not the reason why I don't like him. I don't like him because he's he's pretty sexist. Yeah. Um, he's the guy, like, he insisted penis that... Penis envy and all that shit. He, he insisted yeah. that if women he's uh, masturbated by rubbing their clit, it, it was because they... I'm oh, sorry, I dropped my phone. It's all good. And then if a woman masturbated by rubbing their clit, he was convinced that they were childlike and that you, in order to mature and, like, consider yourself a woman, you would have to, like, play with a dildo whenever you masturbate. Not knowing that, like I was telling you last episode, all simulation happens with the clit. Whether yeah. you're fucking it with the inside or you're rubbing yeah, it on yeah. the outside. And so it's like if you're rubbing your clit from the inside, it's so much easier than like reaching all inside of yourself. Like it's... So I, I give you that. So like, I can't, I I can't you read his but stuff But to talk, to talk like, about... Mm, to go but, to uh, no, but to your point though, like mm-hmm. I feel like his point on, on men's disposition in their, their um, relationship with their mother mm-hmm. is so fucking keen because as a male... If you don't understand the basics of give and take in a love relationship for no more than the fact that your human being and this person is attached to you, mm-hmm. you're always going to have the rest of your relationships in your life fucked off because you're never going to be able to see things for what it is. You're always going to have secondary thoughts. Everything is going to be like trying to play a game. Because when you're a kid and you're trying to just, you know, go through your basic day-to-day lives, you have no idea about all of the auditory dangers that go on in you. The only thing that you have is that trust 
relationship you have with your mother. Mostly, mm -hmm. if you have your father, then that's another trust thing. But that trust between the two of you, if that relationship doesn't have a good upbringing or a good start, your trust issues with everything else in your life are going to be horrid. F F Freud offered a lot of value in terms of like child rearing and like adolescence and how that affects you when you're an adult. Yeah. And a lot of it's still in this like weird kind of creepy sexual way too. Yeah, I think that he... Like anal retentive and oral retentive and all that shit. incest fetish. Stuff. Yeah. He might. Um, and I think <laughs> that he was trying to explain that and like he just kind of assumed that everybody was like that. So it must seem like he was completely wrong on all things. Right. I he also brought only... everything back to sex. Yeah. Like everything had to do but, with sex. Um, I do was there something a... to that? No, I do have a point. I do have um, a lot of understanding on that point because I feel like we as humans through just religion and shit like that have really weird and skewed views on just our bodies themselves and sex in general and like, sex in general yeah. like we, we we're not we're, a sex we're so culture. ashamed of it yeah. growing up and the way that you're taught to being covered up you go through your adolescence learning that you're changing into a body that's supposed to get you to an adulthood but once you actually get to that point and your adolescence is over and you don't necessarily feel like you have the pristine body that turns your whole mental aspect on life in general completely upside down. Didn't you say you had like body issues? Yeah, I had body issues for a really, really long time because I've always been tall and I've always been skinny and I've never been able to hold weight because my metabolism has always been really fucking crazy and shit like that. Because my parents will tell you when I was growing up, I used to eat everything. But then it, it slowly started to make me feel worse about myself because I would start feeling like, okay, well, I don't look like that guy. You know what I'm saying? I should be an adult. I should look and like a man. who was that guy for you? Who well, you I mean, I didn't... It wasn't really anyone in particular. Yeah. It was more along the lines of just like... When you... Like I said, when you're watching TV and shit like that. And my whole idea was... I wasn't in the mental aspect to realize that the guys who were playing teenagers on TV when I was growing up were like in their 20s and fucking 30s. Yeah. So they had <laughs> yeah. time to fucking get their bodies to look a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So... That mental aspect is like, well, damn, these motherfuckers look like they're fucking, you know, uh, football, college football players and shit. And they're in high school. Why don't I look like this? Or even like the Disney like Channel, you got to look beautiful. And yeah. I think right. the thing is, like, pe people are getting a lot better now when it comes to how they perceive women. And women are, like, getting on covers of magazines whenever they're plus size. And mm. women with, like, acne and stuff. And they're, like, not photoshopping people sometimes. You don't see that with dudes. If you look at a, like a dude that's on a magazine cover, he's shredded. Mm, like he's yeah. he's tan. He if he has any gray hair, it's like nice salt and pepper. He's not, he's not balding at all. Like they it, they the, 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 size the image, standards for guys are so the, much higher. I feel like sometimes than girls because like we have to deal with like you have to have big tits and you have to have perfect skin and all right. that. But it's a guy. It's like if you're not shredded and tall, you're like weak. Yeah, and you're seen as weak. And, and, and if there's no there's no really alternatives for. A, a guy that can be hot and super masculine other than like the Terry Crews kind of body. Yeah, and like I grew up just being kind of like more of an athletic kid, more, more artsy kid that was athletic. So like I played sports and all this other shit because I like being athletic, but mainly because other guys were doing it. Hmm. I did the artsy stuff because that's really where my heart lied, but at the same time, your peers kind of fucking especially if you don't have your own like foundation on, on who you are as a person especially when you're like in your preteens and early teens and shit like that whoever your peer group is is gonna push you in the direction that you feel like you need to go so instead of me being more into my music and more into the dramatic shit that I was doing earlier on in my life I pushed everything to the side and went into sports because it was easier it was more socially acceptable you said dr dramatic shit you were doing well like, i did drama and stuff like that through junior high school in the beginning of high school is that and where then, jason brown came from well no because you know there's a composer jason robert brown who does musicals yeah there's a lot yeah. of jason brown <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. no that's you, not the reason why okay. reason the reason why my name is what it is, is are you aware of jason robert brown though yes i am <laughs> i love this shit there's a comedian also named jason brown um there's a football player uh, a lineman named jason brown there's a lot of jason brown so it's like on the internet, I'm lost. It's How awesome. did you come up with that name? Um, okay. I did a stupid, like, generic porn shit where, like, it's for a girl. It's really not supposed to be for a guy. But you pick your favorite animal mm -hmm. and then your mom's maiden name. And your favorite animal is Jason? No, my favorite <laughs> animal is a cat named Jason. And the reason why he's mine. Oh, your favorite pet. Like, oh, uh, gosh. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, favorite pet was a cat named Jason. And the reason why he's my favorite pet is because of the fact that he acted like a dog. 
So, <laughs> like, and I still love cats. Don't get me wrong. I love fucking cats. But he mm. acted like a dog. So, like, whenever anybody would come in the house, especially if he didn't know you know you, he would wait by the... Because we, in my old apartment that I grew up in, we had, like, this ledge where you could actually see out past the hedges and shit like that with a big-ass window. So he would sit right there on the ledge and look outside. And if he didn't recognize you, then he would jump down the window and wait right behind the couch right where the door opens. So if you open the door, he's attacking your ankles. It's going down. <laughs> like, it, that's just what Jason did. It was funny as hell. We had, like, we, I had a lot of crazy-ass cats, though, um, growing up. We had one named Emily, and she would um, stay on our freaking banister and shit like that because we had a light in the banister, and we had a switch at the bottom and switch at the top. So we'd come in the house, and everybody would get home at, like, 5 or 6 o'clock, so it'd be dark come through the living room and shit like that, turn on the light at the bottom of the steps, she be on top of the fucking banister, get spooked, and this is what I'm talking about all the time, get spooked, hit, like, start running off the banister, hit the wall, start sliding down the freaking steps, Damn. hit another wall, slide some <laughs> more steps, and then start scurrying down the fucking steps, get scaring safe. the shit out go, of everybody. Go, 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 doesn't matter, go. <laughs> scaring the shit so out wait, of so everybody. So that means your uh, favorite pet was Jason, and your mother's maiden name was Brown? Yeah. Okay, so if I went by that, then my porn name would be Nia Pernsley. <laughs> that doesn't sound very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to admit, a lot of ready for mine. So it's fa favorite mm -hmm. animal. Go for it. And your mother's maiden name. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The name of a pet or yeah, your favorite pet? Mm -hmm. oh, uh, Sorry. I'm like hopefully it's a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine would be Lola Jandro. <laughs> <laughs> a Jandro is French, so that is Jandro. I would say Low. Just call it Low. Low yeah. Jandro. That's a good name. That's, That's a, a good, good name. Horrible name. name. No one's gonna be able to <laughs> no. spell it. That's what the problem what you, that I'm having with mine. Is spell Jandro. <laughs> no one's going to be able to spell the last name, but everybody's going to be like, oh, it's low. You're yeah. never going to find another low. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I wanted to ask Jason, you said you were engaged before. Yeah. Was that before porn? Yeah. It was before porn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, for me, I'm, I'm kind of rooted in like old school ways because like I said, um, I mean, I'm older, I'm 36, um, and then, like, the person who basically raised me from the beginning of my life, also, my parents were both around, but my great-grandmother, who I've always known as my grandmother, um, she was born in 1922, so she's, like, mm. really, really old, like, she's old school minded and stuff like that, so in the first 12 years of my life, I just grew up around really older people, so I have that mentality ingrained in me but i'm very understanding of shit changes and you got to kind of evolve and roll with the punches so like for me when it comes to like the normal regular relationship shit i still want that and i'm willing to fucking just wait it out if i don't get it what does fine. that look like for you for me it's just like having a normal fucking wife now mind you like i understand my job lends to a whole lot of wild shit but I am a homebody. I am a normal fucking person. And the one good thing about being, because I'm from Los Angeles. So when this business gets crazy and I don't want to deal with this shit, I can go back to my normal fucking life and my normal friends and my parents are like within minutes, like I can be a normal person. And that's kind of what ends up making it easier to deal with this. But also it's kind of one of those things where it's like, if they didn't understand it and weren't cool with it and shit like that, it would be fucking crazy because I wouldn't even be able to go would anywhere. You like I'd be, be stuck. Would you, beyond your industry, would you want to be monogamous with that person? Hell yeah. Because it's like, look, this business is fun. Sex is great. But at the end of the night, like, I need somebody who actually gives a fuck about me and not just my dick. You know? Because it's just like, I know girls feel like this shit all the time, but guys feel this way too. We feel like fucking pieces of meat because... A lot of the times, no one gives a fuck about your personal shit and, like, your mental aspect. They want to fuck the porn star. At, yeah. And, like, and not only that, but it's just, like, as a male performer and shit like that, you're useless to everybody if your dick doesn't work. But people don't understand. Your heart, your mind, and all your mental state goes into your dick working. If you don't feel like you're great or you don't feel awesome and shit like that, no matter what you do, no matter what pills you take or any of that shit, that's just not going to work. So that's like, so true. You the gotta, you the exception being the guys yourself. who are like really into small penis humiliation, and it's like, yeah, your dick doesn't work. Oh fuck yeah, like that just that, that works for them. It, but this it, is the the exception, not the rule. Yeah, it um, is. Go ahead. 
I feel I like the worst thing you could ask was, a guy when his dick isn't working is like, hey, everything working down there? It's like, yeah, no, or, it's or, obviously or, or, not, okay, so let's just not bring it yeah, up. Yeah, or try okay, to rush him. Here's the thing, though. Don't the thing. rush someone. Try That's being, the fuck, most fucked up thing on, on the planet is trying to rush a guy when he's trying to get yeah. off. It's like, hey, baby, we got two minutes. Yeah. No, 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 try being a girl on a porn set. And the guy's having what issues? And you don't know if you should start touching yourself. You don't know if you should start playing with him. I you don't know if you, should, if you should ignore him. That's and it's fair. like, you feel like whatever you do, it's going to be the wrong thing. And like, I've heard people make fun of the girls who are like, oh yeah, baby, just look at me. And like, like sort of like That's do all this with themselves. Um, and it's like, I don't know, no, I don't know what I'm, I do not know what I'm expected to do in those situations. Right. I usually just try to be like, let me know if there's anything I can do. And like, I'll kind of give them a little bit of space, but yeah. like, I don't leave the room completely that like, if you need me to like, Suck your balls, give you a hand job, mm -hmm. like like I don't know, slap your face. I, I don't care. Like I'll I'll do what you need me to do to help you. But, but you also have to understand that like a lot of girls don't do that shit. Like yeah. they'll completely turn into what's taking them so long, and like and that's immediate. And once that and once that kind of like permeates the fucking room, mm -hmm. it's like I tell people all the time. Like guys, once you start down a negative path and you're already into the scene and shit like that, and you don't feel like you're gonna be able to perform and shit like that. It, it is so hard to get yourself out of that shit because once you start down that hill, it's a snowball effect. And it's like... Is it ever appropriate during a, a scene to just be like, hey, can we just take a, a, like a five-second break? Yeah, yeah, but a lot of people don't do that shit. You know what I'm like, saying? Sometimes like, guys are too embarrassed to, but yeah. I would rather a guy say, hey, can you give me like five minutes in the other room with my phone while I go on Pornhub and like do what I need to do to get myself straight? Um, then... Like, be sitting there and, like, I don't, like, there's, like, sometimes they'll stare at me, but if I try to do something, they'll be like, no, no, I got it. And so mm -hmm. it's just like, do I look at you? Do I do anything? Like, what but, do you want? No, like, you, you, but want. you also like, have to understand, Sam, mm -hmm. like, I'm, like, from the male perspective, like, yeah. guys don't feel comfortable doing that shit. Yeah. It's, it's part ego. I get that. It's part ego. But what it really comes down to is just, like, you don't really know what to do in those situations. Guys don't know what to do in those situations because mm. they're mentally not in a place where they can get themselves out of it. And then on top of that, guys don't feel comfortable as people think they do on set. Like, I, even though I'm working for a director I know and I'm cool with, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm comfortable with him telling, yo, I got a problem. I need you guys to back off of me. Because mm -hmm. your, I guess, value, so to speak, for a male performer, even though people don't understand this, is fucking lessened by the guys you're working with because they all feel like, thank you. <laughs> His joint went out, so it's such a read. All, they all feel like they can do your job or they can find some guy off the street that's willing to do it. Why? Because it's a hot girl. Why can't you get hard? But this yeah. is a job, though. It's right. like, it's... This, isn't, this isn't me just fucking some girl because I'm having fun. Mm. This is my job. I got to pay bills. Like, I have shit on the line. And you telling me that I'm not worth it because you can find any guy on the street to do what I do doesn't make my job easier. Me, it makes me, me feel something. like I can't do shit. Let me ask you this, then. Um, as, as a female performer, I want to ask you as a male okay. performer, what would be the best way to talk to a dude just in general, when he's starting to have problems. Because what last couple of times it's happened to me, um, mm -hmm. it was a guy who I, I knew and I liked. So I was just like, hey, can we just make out for a while? Mm -hmm. Like, will you do what you need to do? And he was like, yeah. And so it was just like, I was trying to make it so it was more of a Casual. less pressure right. kind of scenario. And that seemed to, to work. Um, but I'm not always friendly with the dudes. Right. So if I don't, like, know him well already, I don't really feel comfortable. Like, hey, can we just, like, make out as friends real fast? Like, right. I, don't, I don't really know what to what do. What I always do when I first start off in a scene, and I think anybody who knows me knows I do this, is I'll ask the girl what's your do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want to know what you like, what you don't like. So that way, once the scene starts, I know where my parameters are. Yeah, I do are. that with girls and with guys, too. I try to ask them, like, what do you like in particular? What do you not like right. in particular? That way I know. And you know, if you... That seems like it'd be important. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you can get to that stage before everything starts... And kind of bring the pressure down. I feel like it, it kind of works that way. But mm -hmm. at the same time, if you open with that, then if something were to happen later on and there's a problem or something like that, then you should feel more comfortable going to that person and talking about, okay, well, what do you need from me? And that's all you can do. You can ask them what you need from me. And if they need something, great. If they don't, then that's fine. But you can't go beyond that. And don't ever feel like you need to go above and beyond that because mm -hmm. all you did was offer them an opportunity to do what you needed to do with you in order to get them to that place. So I used to Every be an guy's asshole. different, though. Um, I, I used to be kind of a bitch when it came to that kind of stuff. Like uh -huh. Whenever I first started, I usually don't mind acting as the fluffer. 
Um, uh-huh. If need, if if some, the Neil something just, that is gone with like the dark <laughs> yeah. ages in this business. But see, like, it's not always that, like the guys having problems. Sometimes like they're taking forever to set up, or they forgot something, and and they're like, there's it's gonna be Routines a while. Routines off. Did like, they yeah. have fluffers when you started, Jason? Yes. It wasn't like widespread as it used to be, but yeah, because was it like, like a like a favor to a friend thing, or were well, they like paying the fluffer to be like, a fluffer? That sometimes day? it would be like okay, a girl would just be on set because either she would just got finished doing her scene, or like is a friend of the director or something mm-hmm. like that, and then the director would like throw her like two hundred, three hundred bucks and be like, "Can you just be here as a fluffer and shit like that?" I imagine that that went out of style because now the government is kind of in our shit. That. And you have to fill out paperwork for everybody who's on that set, set as yeah. like, like working that day. So if you had fluffers in all your sets, it, it's not as easy as just like sliding your friend a couple of bones. Like you would have to have her fill out paperwork. Yeah. And like depending on the company, you have to do like a video of like, hi, are you being forced to be here? Right. You know, what's your legal name? What's all your these disclaimers birth? and stuff. Hold up this newspaper. And it's like it takes a long time. I didn't realize time. that was a part of the process. Yeah, for yeah, some people. Forced not for everybody. Not... Especially if like a mind geek company, so like Brazzers, Reality Kings, um, like the bigger names, they will do That's kind of to protect them, right? Yeah, yeah. to limit their liability because because you never know when a performer may have an issue with someone on set, whether it be another performer or one of the background people, and they need to cover their ass because we've had a couple of iffy situations. Yeah, like the girl's family finds out, and she was like, like she did it on her own free will, but because her family's uh, upset, she's like, oh no, no, they forced me. And, and, like, you know like, what? I feel like yeah. everyone should do that before they have sex with a stranger ever. <laughs> Just record see, a video. See. Are you being forced to be here? Do see, you consent? Do you sign this paper? The thing I don't like about those sign-in videos, because they do sign out videos too, and mm. unfortunately what ends up happening is they have a dude who obviously just wants to get the fuck done because it's not fun to do sign in videos or the sign out videos. Um, but there's a part of the video where they ask, did anybody force you to be here in the first one? And then in the sign out video, they have you say, uh, did you have time, did you have a good time? Would you come back and work for us again? Did you do anything today that you didn't want to do? And like, there's not saying as a, okay, I'm going to put this camera down. I'm talking to you as a person. How do you feel about today? It's always, tell you your name. Right. Okay, did you, for, we were first to be here today. Did you do anything of your own free will? Right. All right, here's a check. Is it the right amount? Okay, bye. And so it's like, it's not it's like, you don't really feel like you actually... It's program. It's like, instead of it being kind of more along the lines of, I want to get to know exactly how your experience was. And I get why the they do it in the process and shit like that. But I feel like we as a community, we don't take care of ourselves enough. And like, see, it's gotten way better. People, people have gotten... Uh, like a lot more conscious of those types of things, right. but there's still room for improvement. Yeah, because um, I mean, like, you can shove so many of those chips in your mouth. I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry, well, uh, producer Tyler is eating chips back there. Right, very and sneaky. she got mesmerized, even though she's <laughs> no, not smoking. I was just staring really at you, and you just like, weird, just right, went, so many went in there. It was great. Wow. Okay. No, <laughs> like, the di- there's so many differences so between <laughs> when I started and now. Like, when I first started, we only got tested once a month. Mm-hmm. Um. We only got tested for HIV, chlamydia, and gonorrhea, and then every really? six yeah, and then every six months we got syphilis, um, and now it was huh. like it was always March and September were the uh, syphilis um, outbreaks. Yeah. yeah, well, sy- syphilis dates when we got tested. Yeah. So um, that's how everything oh, was sorry. like there. I thought you meant. Once a month, every or so every six months, everyone just contracted syphilis. No, 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 no. Every, no, every six months was the the time when everybody got tested for syphilis gotcha. back in the day. So but then like, everybody we didn't really get tested for syphilis, so and we kept contracting it. We didn't think to do a test. So I I've known people who get like. Uh-huh. Gonorrhea and, and chlamydia a lot. Those are really easy to clear up. Like you get a shot in your yeah, ass, those or are you take some pills, and like a couple of days later you're fine. And you're good. Actually, yeah, just, well, it depends on which one because um. One is, is cleared up by Pendleton and the other one's cleared up by z Um, But, yeah, like, basically it only takes about anywhere from, like, four to ten days in order for that to clear up. Mm-hmm. And That's then, a lot of time to go without working for, for one of you guys, though, huh? Yeah, um, yeah. Depending on how often you work. You work, yeah. Um, if you're the type of person who's lucky enough to, like, be working every day, it's it sucks, but... People will usually like rebook the shoots, especially if you like you just like admit like, hey, I've been exposed to it. Like I've canceled shoots before just because I've been exposed to it, even though I didn't have it. And, like mm-hmm. they rebooked it and it was fine. Um, but if you aren't shooting as much and porn is your main source of income, losing out on three or four shoots could be like your shoots for the month. Yeah. Um, so it's your rent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think that people really need to have like a backup plan. In case you do catch something, that's just a risk that you have to accept. If you're going yeah. to be a sex worker, you have to accept the fact that you might catch an STD. Right. Um, but 
you should have something else in place. That way, if you can't shoot porn, there's another way you can make money. Um, I, I've been lucky enough to where I have my clip stores, I have my OnlyFans. Um, I sometimes will do like just little weird odd jobs for my friends, and like they'll slide me fifty bucks or hundred bucks. Um, sometimes I'll shell, sell my shoes or my panties on the internet. Yeah, like <laughs> and my socks. Um, so there's like if I if I can't shoot porn. Is other stuff I can do? And like sometimes we also have a uh, monitorium. Is that what we call it? Moratorium. Moratorium. Where if someone is exposed um, to like an HIV um, positive person or something like that or comes back with an HIV positive test, we'll have a moratorium. Does, like, does that mean? Everybody basically, stops shooting. everybody stops shooting. No, long, one, no one's allowed to shoot. Yeah. And um, um, everybody normally waits until all of the people who have been in contact with the original tested positive person gets tested and see mm. if they're positive, and then they test all the people that are in the next generation of theirs to, if they're positive and stuff like that, just to make sure that it didn't spread. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be really scary. Yeah. Um, see, the first time it happened when I was in porn, um, it ended up being a false positive. So I was really, really scared. I had just started, and I was like, fuck, what did I just... It was whenever Charlie Sheen had also, like, in the oh, again, yeah, HIV, okay. and I had just worked with a girl <clears throat> who was bragging about the fact that she had fucked him. Oh. So I was I was so scared. And then it turned out to be a false positive, and everything was fine. Charlie second time it happened... Though. Uh, no, <laughs> well, no. But then the second time it happened, where somebody was trying to do a porn scene, so they went and got tested, and they it popped for uh, HIV, also a false positive. The first uh, time I've seen like real positive HIV tests in porn was just in this last year, in 2018. We had two positive tests, right. and I'm convinced that and this is just a theory. Um, I'm not 100% sure on this. It's not. Don't take my word as gospel. Take it with a grain of salt. This is just my theory on it. Um, we've also seen a rise in people shooting their own content more and more. We've seen a rise with people who do gay porn where they test this differently than us. They test once a month, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and they, they do content treat with somebody who's doing straight stuff. Um, and there's nothing wrong with the gay community. There's nothing wrong with doing gay porn. But because we went from if you're shooting porn, you're shooting with a company that has everybody in the past system to we're just kind of shooting whenever we feel like it. Right. Not everybody's checking tests because like, oh, I know that guy. Like, it's fine. Um... It can get really dangerous. Right. And I, it's something that whenever I started dating the guy that I'm with now, it's my first time dating somebody who was in porn uh, and who was fucking other people as much as I was. Like, whenever I first started doing porn, I was just, like, having my little flings. Um, I was still getting tested. I was using condoms. And, like, sometimes they would go get tested, too. So it was fine. Like, I knew they weren't really fucking around with other people. But with him, he fucks a lot. Like, he fucks more than I do. <laughs> um, because he also shoots his own stuff. So that's something that we, like, our first couple of fights, it was him... Like, oh, I'm going to shoot this content with somebody. Oh, is, did they have a test? No, they're a couple of days out of their test, but it's fine. I'm like, no, it's not. Because, mm -hmm. like, if you fuck them and they have something. Pop, I'm, I'm screwed. And then you yeah. get it and then you give it to me. And then I'm screwed and I didn't even get to, like, have the fun of the sex. Like, right. like, I didn't, like, I didn't have to have the fun of fucking that person. Like, I just had the unfortunate thing of having to, like, fuck you and you were lax about your stuff. So it was like, I, I, now we have, like, what, this rule in our relationship. If you fuck someone, either you wear a condom or you look at their test and it has to be 14 days recent. If they don't, if you don't have a condom or you don't have a recent test, you're not fucking them. Like it's, like I would not fuck them. So please right. do not put me in harm's way by fucking them. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and for me, it's just like I don't, like I said, I don't shoot a whole lot of my own content and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. plus, with that, it's like I generally only want to shoot with people who are already in the business, so I know yeah. they have a test. And stuff. we're safer. Like people make jokes about like like every time I post an um, ad for a group scene on Twitter. There's a couple of people that are like, oh, it's an STD party. Huh? It's like, bitch, we're cleaner than you. Right. Like, 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 when we, was the last time you got we tested, We have man? to like, be oh. conscious of our sexual health because it's our job. Mm -hmm. It's our livelihood. Like, you guys go out there and just sling around your dicks and pussies acting like you're invincible and shit. And that shit's not cool. Like, even before I got into the business, I was very fucking conscious about condoms and shit like that. Just because it's like, I don't want some type of decision that was made in a haste to be something that ruined someone else's life. Yeah, and thankfully, you know? because of the past system, um, there hasn't been a onset, onset. Tr tr transmission of HIV in, I think, 13 years? At least. So the two positive tests that happened in 2018... Were um, people who were just about to shoot. They had never actually been on set yet. Yeah, um, so they didn't pass it to anybody on set. They didn't work on a set where they when they had it. Um, unfortunately... Europe is having a problem right now where they mm. had an HIV outbreak. I think it was like nine people tested oh, positive. Fuck. And one of them is a guy that's really big in the industry. People, at least people say. Um, he hasn't confirmed himself, so I'm not going to say his name. But a prominent male performer in Europe is rumored to have had it. And it's scary because like, they test once a month. Um, and 
they will like go all over. Um, they don't have really a pass system like we do. And because it's Europe, where a bunch of little different countries have their own different testing Situation, standards, and like, yeah. people are kind of bouncing around from country to country shooting, they're getting different types of tests each time. And sometimes like they'll take a break and do some escort, and then they'll come back. And it's like, if you're in LA and you're doing porn, I would highly recommend like having another source of income, but a lot of these people like porn is their main thing well, that they Jason, do. Jason, you so. were you were probably, if I'm doing my math correctly here, you were probably around during the the first AIDS epidemic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the it wasn't even really an epidemic. It was just the first person who was in our business that had popped for it, and like. No, I mean the the 1980s AIDS epidemic. Oh that. well, yeah, but I mean I was a kid, man. I was yeah. like fucking oh, that's true. Yeah. six mm-hmm. to eight years old. So like I really didn't understand that shit at all, and. Like the first thing, the first time it was kind of like impactful in my life learning about it was when uh, Magic got it, because I was yeah. like in the fourth grade at that point, and like I'd never seen like a grown man outside of like my family like cry, and like my teacher the day it came out because I had like a substitute teacher for like half the semester in fourth grade, and the teacher was like fucking balling, like this grown ass man. He had to be at least like six three. In like, you know, 200 pounds, big ass dude, like just balling, talking about how magic got HIV. And it's like, for me, I understood it from the perspective of being a young Lakers fan. And like, that was one of the guys that I looked up to. And now all of a sudden his career is over and it was kind of like, why? So that whole aspect of it is what kind of like made it stick that this is something serious. But at the same time, like, I have a personal experience. My brother has HIV. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the day that he came out and told us about it, it was probably one of the most emotional days in my life just because me and him didn't have the greatest relationship when we were growing up, but I still cared enough about him. I'm like, that's still my brother. And then when I got to my adulthood, like I think every sibling kind of situation kind of gets you become closer because you don't have that stupid sibling rivalry shit going on. So, um, the older that he got, the more closer we got. And it was just, it was heartbreaking because to see him realize and be upfront about him being himself being gay. And I mean, I knew that shit since he was eight years old. It was nothing you can pass by me. I mean, he, he just had that type of way about him. There's nothing wrong with that shit. And that shit pisses me off when people kind of have this weird ass connotation. You knew who the person was before you got there. Don't fucking act surprised when they tell you, hey, I'm gay or I'm bisexual or something like that. Mm-hmm. So My dad came um, out when I was 13, so oh, yeah. I also got gay in the family. Oh, okay, yeah. so yeah. I'm you know, my dad's side is what I like to say. <laughs> so yeah, you know what I'm saying? So like when that hit home is just like, you have to understand it's not a death sentence, but it is one of these things where it's like your life is changed for the rest of it. You You have something that through no fault of your own, you know, it's something that you're just going to take over your life for the rest of it. It's it's going to be a major factor in your life. And people do the, the weirdest shit where they, they kind of push people away that have it. And it's just like, dude, it's the simplest shit to take care of. It is not that fucking contagious. Like, the worst thing you would have to worry about is if you were in some type of fucking contact blood-wise with the person. But generally speaking... Everybody has their own shit, right? So you shouldn't ever use someone's toothbrush or razor blade or something of that nature where you would be able to transfer blood. So the likelihood of you being able to get HIV from someone who's positive outside of sexual contact is damn near impossible. Especially with a lot of with the drugs they have these days. Yeah. yeah. And with, you know um, what I'm like, like I do want to look into getting on prep soon because I have been nervous about that. Well, that's the um, thing that people don't understand is. Charlie Seen used PrEP for a really long time. Mm. That's why a lot of the people that he had sex with did not contract that shit. Because I knew a couple of girls who were in the business who had relationships with him. Mm -hmm. And, like, yeah, I've done scenes with him after I'd found out about it. And it didn't really register to me until I found out that he was doing it. But they were all telling me, like, he had been taking that PrEP for a long time. So it wasn't like it was just something that it just happened. You know, those who are listening who don't know, PrEP is pre-exposer prophylaxis, which is a, it's a preventative or a, uh, it's a, it's kind of like, it's, it's kind of like a pro- prolactive for HIV. Yes. You it have, reduces the risk. It reduces no, your it risk. It doesn't make it completely impossible it for some, you to get yeah, it. It's something like yeah. an 80% e- efficacy rate or something yeah. like mm-hmm. that. It's a really high efficacy rate for, and it can also be taken, um, post-exposure. 
So if you find out that you were exposed to it and you take it within 72 hours, believe, it can yeah. be effective. Mm -hmm. um, the, the problem with people taking prep in the industry, though, because I have people had... Right now we're yeah. having this weird debate. I'm sorry that this episode is so... Um, like serious this time. But no, it, it, that's it, fine. It's that, just, it's, it's, people it's are be fast. It's, I'm fascinated by all this mm. stuff. So we're we're having this debate in the porn world right now yeah. about whether or not we should allow people who are HIV positive to work in porn. Which and, and in order to do that, we like make them accepted in the past system. Right now, if you have anything, if you come, pop on gonorrhea, syphilis, but especially HIV, HIV, you're not cleared in the past system. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody who searches your name in there can see that. Um, so some it people won't tell are you saying, specifically what you have. It just tells you you can't work. Yeah. Right. Um, and some people are saying that because we have things like PrEP and because there are other, um, there's other medication that people who are HIV positive can take to like lower the risk of passing, passing it on, on. Um, that we should allow people in because it would be like damn near impossible for you to pass it on if you're taking PrEP. You're playing with fire there, though. That's the thing that, and not yeah. only that, but PrEP's expensive, especially if you don't have insurance, and unfortunately, like, we do have a lot of people who get into sex work because they they don't have a lot of money right now. Yeah. Um, and the one of the things I love about sex work is that it's easily accessible and that anyone can start at any time. Right. Um, if you added the layer of, if you start doing porn, you have to get insurance and you have to get on prep and then like it may or may not actually work for your body because sometimes it makes people sick. Sometimes it makes you feel like shit for a while. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you have to be monitored for a while, like the first, I think it's like first three weeks or something that you take it to see if your body can even handle it. Right. Um, and, and so it's like not everybody can go through that process. If you want to shoot your own stuff with somebody who's HIV positive, that should be your decision. But whenever you add the entire performer pool, pool into it's that decision like you can't make everybody agree with yeah. you we all agree on the past system already we're sticking with that i think that we should stick with that i i don't think do that people use the past system when they're doing content trade or they should they but should. not everybody does and that's right. that's what I, I think we talked about this in the other episode where um this is why there's been like a little bit more of a spread because ah! sometimes people like like the, even the dude that i was dating um like if, they, if it's their friend and they're like oh like one or two days over their test They'll be like, oh, it's okay, I know you, it's fine, we'll shoot anyway. Um, people shouldn't do that. No. Um, and, and it's because of stuff like this. Like maybe you won't catch HIV, HIV, but maybe you have gono, and you would have known about it today if you'd gotten tested two days ago. Right. Um, so it, it's it's like a, I, not everybody need, like there's nothing making people check tests before they do a content trade. Because most of the time it's on your phone, like my phone fucking shoots 4K whenever I shoot content trade with people. Right. I just like, I give the guy the phone, like here, hold it sideways and point down and let right. me suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's like I check tests, um, but no one's making me do that. And like whenever I post the video on Pornhub, there's no like little section like, please enter the information for your past system. Right. Um, and, and so then nobody's checking that. Whenever somebody like browsers shoots a scene, um, people are checking into that. The government is checking into that periodically. So if browsers, if there, if browsers gets told, hey, we need like the last January, um, show us all of the information for that, and then like they have a scene that they shot, and like they don't have those people that test for that, or they don't have a video showing like, hey, did you see your partner's test? What kind of video are you shooting today? Did you agree not to use a condom? All of that kind of shit. Um, they can get in trouble. They can get sued. So. I wish that there's a way to have a similar system of content trade, but honestly, I think it's impossible. Anybody yeah. with a smartphone can shoot porn. Right. And there's no way to regulate that. And that's kind of like, it's it's a catch-22 because it empowers the performers because it, it, it allows you not to be hamstrung to the companies and yeah. stuff like that. It's, like, it's easier but than ever to own it, your own shit. I have a question for Jason. Okay. Is there, um, <laughs> When you have that uh, starting conversation with the girl before you do a shoot, mm -hmm. um, do you does birth control come up? It depends because it's like, generally speaking, I'm not planning on coming in her unless the scene like asks for it. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, so it's facials all day. It's, it's yeah, it's facials <laughs> or, or somewhere on their body usually. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like for stuff like that, like. I don't really go into it unless the director's like, oh, okay, and usually they'll ask. You it's know the girl's saying? responsibility. It's not the guy's responsibility to ask. Like the performer's responsibility to ask. I'm just saying, control. God forbid, you well, pregnant. Um, it's not even. I don't feel. Like, I don't feel like it's easy. It's, it's either one. I feel like if you're a director and you're planning on this shoot being a cream pie shoot, 
then you should go through and follow through and ask the girl, are you okay? Because usually I hear yeah. them like, are you okay with this being a cream pie shoot? If you are, are you on birth control? If not, can do you need to go get a plan B prescription or something like that? Yeah, and I've like, heard stories of like a guy who's supposed to come on the girl's belly and tits and like he misses slightly and lands in like her belly and pussy and the girl freaking out and ruining the end of the cum shock. She's like, I'm not on birth control. Why are you a sex worker and you're not on birth control? That is... Yeah. Fuck. Uh, no, you have to understand there's a lot of girls who are like that too because they're not expecting to take it in their pussy. And I get that too. But it's just like everybody, I feel like we, as like I said before, we as an industry, we don't take care of ourselves. Like mm -hmm. we don't, I feel like there should be like some type of pamphlet or like course like one one hour course I mean, a week where like someone if this just starting out we can come in and be like okay well you know you might want to go and uh get an llc you might want to freaking go there's something and that's trying like like apac um there's this thing called the adult performer advocacy committee right um and they try to do that they have meetings every sunday um, they try to cover those questions like how do you do your taxes as a porn star? Uh, how do you become an LLC? If something bad happens on set, who do I talk to? Um, stuff like that. But unfortunately, it hasn't really taken off very well. Um, so not a lot of people know that it's around and the people who do know it's around like don't really seek it out often. And I feel like it's because, and I hate to say it, it, it doesn't feel like there's enough power no. behind that group. And that's the reason why I feel like a lot of people don't understand. We, as as performers, should have had some type of union, like, a long disagree. time ago. No, I completely disagree, dude. Okay, so this kind of circles back to my argument that what's something I love about sex work is that it's very Anybody accessible. can do it. Right. If we had a union... And in order to be a porn star, you had to pay union dues. Guess who? The only people who'd be able to be in porn are people at the very top. No. Like, the, reason why, the reason why I say that's not the case and mm -hmm. why I say we should have some type of union, and I'm not talking about some great big-ass fucking corporate union, but the way I feel about it is like this. You already have, when you go and get tested, pass re in, you know, reimburses you. A part of what you're testing will be for that month. Mm -hmm. The way that I feel about it is when you go into that pass system and you go and they take that money and they put it away from you and they get it for you every, what, three months, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I feel like they should take $15 out of that money, put it towards your union dues when you get tested because you got to get tested any fucking way. That I would like. That you got to get like tested lot. anyway. You yeah. have to get tested in order to work. So why can't you take the money that you were going to repay us because we're going to get tested, take $15 out of that for whatever month you was in there, if you want to take it for two months or three months, whatever the case may be, just so it works out in a streamline, do that. That's your union dues. That's why you join the union. I would really like that, actually. That makes, it, yeah. it makes no fucking sense why that can't be done, and then we can have some type of power, some type of money behind the fact that, like, we as performers have way more power because we are taking all of the risk. You are getting all of the money. Mm -hmm. We're being exposed to people's ridicule, racism, sexism, bullshit that they want to put on the internet because we're public personalities now, or influencers, or whatever the fuck you want to call us. And so everyone feels like they have an opportunity or they have the stance to come at us in any type of direction. If we had an actual union that people actually recognize, maybe, just maybe, we could stop the government from coming on us about all these little insignificant things because they have a problem with just sex in general. This because is what I find this, you there's, a, there's a fucking, supposed to be a separation between church and state, but there's not. There's never been one. We're a Christian nation, motherfuckers, and I'm like a Christian kid, but it's fucking bullshit when you're in the land of the free and I'm supposed to be able to do whatever the fuck I want, but yet, if the Christian God is telling me you gotta do it like this, I'm bound by everybody saying that's how it has to be done. We don't know shit. Please, people, get beyond the Bible, get beyond the good book, get beyond whatever your text is because it's a guide. That's all it is. If you start realizing that everything that's in all of these books are just stories that have been re-smashed in together and regurgitated in a different way with different names and different places and different ideals on how to get to this certain place, you would start realizing that it's just a way to get you to understand the basics of how you're supposed to treat other human beings. Beyond that, we don't know shit.
Can, I, can I just tell you, I think you're really hot when you talk like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys, do you guys want me to get out of here so you can show me? <laughs> I mean, you're my buddy and I, I wouldn't ask you to, but you're yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. So... Oh, we should do comments. Right, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so, this is a section called We Read Your Porn Comments. <laughs> I, <laughs> I went on Pornhub earlier and I looked up Jason Brown. Um, and I went to the most watched videos and I just kept looking at the comments until I saw stuff that I thought was like funny or cute or sweet. Um, Which so, did not take very long. No. Um, and he has not seen these yet. No. Um, so the way I want you to do this, I want you to read the username out loud. So it's going to be like Big Dick John 543 <laughs> okay. says. And then read the comment. Okay. I think right. it's the same fake name that you used in our last episode. It's a hey. good name. Hey. <laughs> if it works. <laughs> no, it's, it it works. it's making me think it's a real person. Who's a... No, the, like, see, one of my favorite new usernames is like a Jungle Gym 319 or something like what? that. What? Um, here, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Young Hot Ebony 609 says in black.com we trust and for those of you who don't know i was um contracted with black.com for almost three years which was he was that was the only company he shot with yeah that means like a lot of people were mad at me <laughs> <laughs> um okay knights 87 says if the guy doesn't crouch he isn't gonna level up his sneak skills what the you mean about Apparently, in this skills. one, like, he kind of like snuck up behind her and then starts to do I something. am not a cat burger, bitch. Okay, I just played <laughs> one on the internet. Okay. Um, okay, Marathon Masturbator. And he didn't <laughs> completely spell it all the way out, but good job, bro. Um, very bad posture around 208. All right. Um, she's lifting with her back and not her legs. I wonder if those are even real weights. They might just be props filled with foam. Okay, I already know what that people would have seen he's talking about. He's talking about the seat I did with Nicole Addison. Keep reading, yes, keep... those were real weights, you fucking bitch. Keep, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. Oh, oh, those aren't standard deadlifts. Those are called Romanian deadlifts, RDLs in parentheses. And that is proper form. Activates your hammies more than regular deadlifts. Look it up. <laughs> Was someone defending you in the comments? That's defending so her. I yeah. wasn't. And she was doing the in, in the same, yeah. I'm her personal trainer, and she's doing all the work. So, that, that, yeah, she's defending the beautiful Nicole Anderson. But, yeah. Um, okay, and then this one's from Unknown. Never thought I'd see the day porn act, um, Porn made it, motivated me to train harder. <laughs> actually, you know what? I never thought the day that porn would actually activate me to fucking go and train harder, but I actually have to because there's a lot of big-ass fucking monster fucking toned-out dudes now, and I've been along for too long. I can't fucking be as skinny as I used to be. <laughs> so I just uh, started doing dance classes because I can't stand working out. <laughs> and the thing is, I, I have a naturally athletic-looking body. Yes. And so people keep putting me in workout videos, mm -hmm. and I don't work out. You don't know what you're doing. So <laughs> really hard. I did a thing for Playboy where uh, one of my friends did it and she said they had her doing yoga and she has like a nice big ass so I can see like her doing like downward dog and stuff would be pretty. Um, so I was thinking easy day. It's Playboy. They just want me to be cute and it'll be fun. <laughs> um, so I get there and they're like, okay, so since you have abs, like you have like pretty defined abs, we're gonna have you doing the ab workout portion of this DVD. And we want you to hold on to this bar, uh, do a, a, a pull up, and then raise your knees to your chest in like a circular motion. <laughs> so it was just, oh I was shit, okay, mind you, dying. I know sexy. how to work out and that shit's hard for me. <laughs> and then like they had this guy who was supposed to be like my trainer and he was just like this dude, he was a, like an actual model, like he wasn't like a porn star or anything mm. like that. And he was supposed to just stand there shirtless and like look at me and like act like he was turned Tell on you. by me and I felt so bad for him because I just was like anytime they were on my face I was just like eh. <laughs> like cry <laughs> I did not look sexy oh whenever they were on my face I just like stopped doing the lower body motions no. and I'm just like oh. <laughs> yeah and then when they pan down I'm like oh, I hate this <laughs> I'm so sore. Um, oh, but so sorry. never worked out, and it was it was for Playboy. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I well, think I feel like also your jobs are very physical, <laughs> like in well, nature. Yeah, but, like, yeah. Okay, so the guy does most of the work. 
honestly, like there's there's reverse cowgirl and cowgirl where I might be doing stuff, but I can like kind of just put the weight on my hands and yeah, like and behind then... me in uh, cowgirl and like be on my toes. About, like, uh, and then I'm just like kind shit. of bouncing. That like, like a lot of work. That's also most of the guys. Really? In gangbangs, I love them, even though I know they're hard for my male co stars because I just have to receive. Be there. She they, just has to be there. Yeah, they they usually like will shoot gangbangs. Right, what about like a blow bang? That's even like harder. A lot of work. That's even harder. Because then the, the guys? guys, the guys are doing like they're jerking off until until it's their two minutes in the mouth. Right. <laughs> like like <laughs> people don't understand the dynamics of like what real <laughs> porn is. It's not like the fantasy you see once it's cut and edited and placed on the internet or on your DVDs and shit like that. It is a lot of awkward ass fucking sex because I don't know anybody that at home fucking does reverse cowgirl but yet damn near every scene that I'm ever in you have to do that shit. Weirdly enough, I don't, I'm fine doing reverse cowgirl in porn and every time I try it in my personal life I get embarrassed. I feel, like, I feel like if the camera angles are right, then like my butt looks good. Like they're doing everything possible to make it look great. And then like whenever I'm just doing it, I'm like, is that is that okay? okay? Yeah. Like, you're looking back, <laughs> am I looking back at it right? What yeah. the fuck am I doing? I no, but it's just like everything's fucking over because it's like okay, um, in order for you to actually see the sex, I can't really be in a normal fucking sex position. I've got to kind of be at like my hips are got to be like at a an angle like that's like. At least thirty degrees or more One away from the girl's comedians. hips and shit. One of my favorite comedians has a bit about this where he was like, "Don't do the stuff that you see in porn in real life because it gets weird." He was like, "I was trying to like I was watching porn <laughs> and I saw this guy was like hitting it from the side." And so later on with my wife, I was like, "I'm gonna do this like cool thing. She's gonna really appreciate it. I'm like hitting me part of the pussy, so I start hitting it from the side." And she's like, "Are you trying to show no. this to someone?" <laughs> like, you have a camera And he was like, "They only do that for the fucking angle." Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What, what comedian is that? It's, I the mean, guy that? it's the guy that takes his shirt off. I'm, I'm, fuck, you gotta, you gotta on. find I'm that. Like, now. Because that is, he, that is, he has, he that is the most, Netflix. like, perfect <laughs> civilian, and yes, we call people who are not sex worker <laughs> civilians. Um, That's the most civilian best way to explain it. Because mm -hmm. it's like, you don't realize that, like, I have to work my body out just to be able to do the shit that you think that you can do at home, but you can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. It, it, the show was called Secret Time. The special. Time. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, um, Bert Kreischer? Yes! Ah, yes. Bert Kreischer. <laughs> I love Bert Kreischer. I listen to his hilarious. podcast. Yeah, the Bert yeah. cast. Oh, we should, okay. okay, we should listen to that. I'm yeah. trying to, read, to, to listen Kreischer. to more podcasts so I could like see what I'm And his wife has one called Wife of the Party. I want <laughs> to hear what his wife sounds like. She's a lot of bits about She's his southern. wife. She's Oh. oh, she's like a southern bat, and she is just as as interesting as he is. That's why she has her own podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning of the, every podcast, it's him and her when he's doing uh, his ad read, and she's always like picking on him a little bit in that southern <laughs> way, and he's always Aww. just like, Leanne, will you stop? <laughs> like, these fucking ads. And they're like, in a loving way. That's like cute. Their, their dynamic is really cute. So anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, shout out to the Birdcast. Mm -hmm. But on that note, I do need to get going. Yes, 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 um, yes, 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 yes. So... Thank you very, very much okay. for coming on this show. Yes. Um, please tell us where we can find your porn, your social media, and your music. Okay. For the social media, you can find me on the Instagram at duh, that's D-A, real, Jason Brown, 3X. There is a lot of freaking fake accounts, so please make sure you got that right. So is it um, D-A... D-A-R-E-A-L-J-A-S-O-N-B-R-O-W-N, mm -hmm. 3X. Okay, Instagram. so not XXX, but no, the number three, three and X. X. Yeah. Okay. And then for uh, Twitter, it's at PS underscore, which is that little line at the bottom of the freaking thing. J Brown XXX for Twitter. And then if you want to check out my music because I'm revamping my actual website, um, you can go to my SoundCloud page, which is soundcloud.com slash K-Y-R-O, which is Cairo 09. Wait, make sure that's right. Because sometimes <laughs> I freaking forget. Um, yeah, Cairo 9 um, on SoundCloud, and you'll find all my music and stuff like that. I should be putting some more stuff out. I'm just waiting to get back to my producer and get some stuff mastered and stuff, but I'll hopefully have some stuff out before the end of March. Okay, cool. So. Um, so, thank you very much for watching and listening. You can subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes, and you can become a patron on our Patreon, where you can also submit fan questions where uh, in the future shows we'll start asking our guests uh, whatever you want us to ask them. Um, yeah. Snoochie boochies. Um, so yeah, I am Kira Noir. You can find me on Twitter at the Kira Noir. You can find my porn 
on Pornhub. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and producer Tyler, would you like to shout out anything in particular? Mm, nope, I'm producer Tyler. Uh, hopefully you won't find me. <laughs> okay. uh, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, uh, Jason Brown, thank you for getting high and horny. Thank you. Hey, hey perfect timing. My roommate just got home. Yay! Yay! Perfect timing. <laughs>